I'll be honest with you guys, Peter Pan was never my favorite as a kid, but with my personal childhood opinions aside, is it good? Not really. Was it good at the time? Sure, sure, sure. Let's go with that. Peter Pan was released in 1953 and was based off of the book by James Matthew Barry. Years later, it became one of the most beloved and nostalgic Disney movies to date. Is it the same for me? Well, I hadn't watched it in years, so we'll have to find out what the plot synopsis. The movie starts off at a house in London where the Darling family lives. Parents, voiced by Han Cornreed and Heather Angel, sound familiar, are heading out to rob a bank, leaving their kids home alone with their nanny dog. This family sounds a little dysfunctional just by the dog's role alone. John, the second child, who's voiced by Paul Collins, is playing with his younger brother. Michael is voiced by Tommy Lusky, the son of one of the movie's directors, Hamilton. After making a big shit stink with his sons and dog, he bitches at his daughter Wendy for telling her brother stories about Peter Pan and wants her to grow up. Wendy is voiced by Catherine Beaumont, who played Alice in Disney's previous film, Alice in Wonderland. The parents then leaves, and Peeping Tom breaks into the kid's bedroom. Peter Pan is voiced by Bobby Driscoll, and apparently goes to the same clothing store as Robin Hood, while Tinkerbell, Disney's beloved fairy mascot and butt fetish, is voiced by a literal string of aluminum foil. Finding out that Wendy is being forced to grow up, Peter decides to take her and her brothers to Neverland. Ahem. <coughs> Neverland. Meanwhile, Captain Hook, voiced by Hans Cornrade, plans to kidnap a Native American chief's daughter to find out where Peter lives. Why? Because he fed Hook's hand to a crocodile and banished him and his crewmates for growing up. Sh should we really be rooting Peter Pan here? After spotting Peter and the darling children in the sky, the pirates shoot them down. Tinkerbell decides to get the group of kidnapped children to kill her, which gets her banished by Peter. Link flies off with Wendy so she can see the mermaids and orders John, Michael, and the Lost Boys to capture some Native Americans. What? The boys then get captured and Wendy is nearly drowned. And Peter is laughing! The two see Hook and Smee kidnapping Tiger Lily and Peter has another shot at being sadistic. Peter, Wendy, and the boys are then thanked by the Native Americans. Meanwhile, Tinkerbell gets abducted and tells Hook the location of Peter's home, which allows the pirates to kidnap the children and plant a bomb to kill Peter Pan. But unfortunately, Tinkerbell escapes and saves Peter. But before the children walk the plank, Link and the fairy rescue them, and Hook gets fed to the crocodile. The darling children come home, and Wendy wakes up, realizing that she was just under the effects of the medicine their dog gave them. The end. So let's talk about the movie. Remember when I said that I wasn't a fan of Pinocchio, but after watching it when I'm older, my opinion changed in a positive way? Well, Peter Pan is that, but the opposite. Seriously, I strongly believe that as I'm writing this script, I'm talking myself into liking it less. One of the few things that I like about this movie, however, is that it kept the Disney furnace going. If this movie actually went to shit instead of being average for me, and a childhood trophy for the rest of the world, we'd be left with this empty gap that no one remembers before they move on to Lady and the Tramp. Wendy is my favorite character in this movie because of how caring and intelligent she is. She even cringes at how Peter Pan is tormenting Captain Hook at one point. I personally feel bad that she doesn't actually wake up and realize how much of a jerk Peter is. While Captain Hook is entertaining comedy-wise mainly because of Smee, I don't exactly understand the big deal about this antagonist. He's one of the best examples of manipulator, sure, but that's it. Nothing else. His aim is good, that is, if he's shooting one of his crewmates and not Peter Pervert. I like this ending transition where it changes from Neverland to the moon to Big Ben and to the grandfather clock. That's genius. Another positive is that I found Michael adorable. That's literally all I can say about him. And in fact, that's all my positives. I know this is infuriating a lot of Peter Pan fans, which is probably half of the world, but I just want to let it be known that I was really looking forward to this turning out like a Pinocchio review, which it really surprised me that I didn't, and that's... kinda sad. Before we get into the negatives, I'd like to talk about George who doesn't fall in either category. So as a child, I hated the father a lot because of his yelling and how he treats Nana, but seeing him now as an adult still makes me hate him, though I now get that the father means well and that he's only preparing them for the harsh reality of the world, and he was pretty much right given the fact that the sequel takes place during World War II. Now thinking about it, John and Michael probably got drafted. Shit. 
First negative is that I'm not exactly attached to this Tinkerbell as I am in the Pixie Hollow series. I honestly can't explain why, probably because she has more of a character in those. While the woodland creatures from South Park in this movie aren't useless, they have to be the most uninteresting sidekicks so far. They don't even have names in this movie, though I might be going a little too hard on them. I mean, we got Turk and what's his name from Tarzan. And now it's time to talk about my least favorite thing in this movie, the protagonist himself. How messed up is that, honestly? As a kid and an adult, I always found Peter to be a dick in this movie. Really, I do. How he treats his friends and the sexist things he says to Wendy really gets on my nerves. Although father says- Girls talk too much. <laughs> yes, girls talk too- uh -huh. Oh. Well, get on with it, girl. What did she say? She says you're a big ugly girl. <laughs> <laughs> I get that he's a preteen boy and that's how they usually act, but how can I be rooting for a protagonist if he's impolite, sadistic, and a freaking idiot? He's an asshole. Could you imagine if Disney did the twist of Peter Pan being the villain like it was in the source material and Once Upon a Time? I really miss Once Upon a Time. Captain Hook was so cool. Something I'd also like to mention is that I really can't see how visiting a place like Neverland is so desirable compared to Hogwarts and Cherrytown Academy. Like, the Darling children describe it as this amazing world where they don't have to grow up. And while Pixar Hollow slaps as a real beauty, the rest of Neverland is just a jungle. You might as well venture off into the deepest part of the forest and call it good. Because that's all there is. And then once you settle down in Neverland, you have to worry about three different groups that could kill you if you didn't join them. It's like in Fallout 4 with the Brotherhood, the Railroad, and that third one. Anything else I'm forgetting? I think that's all of- Oh wait a minute, I forgot to talk about John! You guys might want to take a seat for this one. John is boring, but his voice actor did a great job. That's it, you can stand up now. So with all the negatives and positives listed, let's rate the songs from worst to best. In 6th and last place, The Elegant Captain Hook. I'm not a real fan of pirates, I'll be honest about that, and I honestly forgot that song existed. 5th place, What Makes the Red Man Red. Bet you all were looking forward to me talking about this one, and I agree. It's offensive, and that's really all I can say because I don't think it's my place to decide. It's above the previous song because I remember it more. Seriously, did any non-Peter Pan fan remember that song? Fourth place, second star to the right. It's a great slow melody that's perfect for a classic Disney opening. Third place, following the leader. The downside is that the lyrics repeat over and over, but other than that, it's fun and catchy. Maybe a little too catchy, because like Let It Go, it's so good that I avoid it, otherwise it gets stuck in my head. Second place, You Can Fly. I love the clever use of the rhymes at the beginning, and the chorus gives me chills. And in first place, Your Mother and Mine. It's such a wonderful lullaby, being sweet, slow, and kind of sad when the pirates appear on screen. Again, should we really be supporting Peter Pan as the protagonist? Even Walt Disney hates him. So that was my Peter Pan review. It's definitely not a favorite of mine, and I probably won't watch it again anytime soon. It has an unlikable protagonist, an uninteresting world, orphan furries that you can't name off the top of your head, and it's apparently not as bad as what they originally had in mind since they were planning on killing off Nana in the ending. Yep. 4 of 10, not my taste. But maybe I'd like Lady in the Tramp more than this, right? I might need to sit down for this one.